Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely display cabinet. This is part of my doll's house diary um, living room. So this is going to go in the living room of my own doll's house. And if you have a look at the um, other videos on my channel you'll find the doll's house diary series so you can see how the living room's coming together. And all of the furniture in there will have this black on gold sort of aged effect. And I'm using these brass, um, antique brass sort of drop ring handles. And these are available in my Etsy store if you want to copy the piece exactly. Otherwise just any sort of handles. And I think gold looks nice or the antique brass with this paint effect. So for the paint I've just used a black emulsion. And these little sample pots are really good. And for the gold, I've used this Rustin's gold paint. Any sort of gold paint you can get hold of. And then over the top, I've done a clear coat. And I've used a satin varnish for that. I've used my Gorilla Wood glue, which you'll know by now is one of my favourites. And to fit the acetate into the door, I used deluxe materials, glue and glaze. Now you could just use a PVA um, to fix that in, but this glue and glaze is good because it doesn't fog the glass or leave any marks on it. The wood I've used again is a beige, and I used a sheet wood in two thicknesses and a strip wood for the, the corners and the feet. You'll need your craft knife. I use a Swan Morton knife. It's got a metal handle and it takes a size 10A blade and I always put a new blade in at the start of the project or if it begins to catch or drag along the wood during the project that means it's becoming blunt so I always just put a new blade in. Steel rule for measuring and cutting the wood with your craft knife. Nice sharp pencil for accurate marking. For the door um, I've used a, a, what we call a pin hinge and that's just a pin at the top and bottom there. So you'll need some dressmaking pins and to just snip those you'll need a pair of pliers. For the moulded top and bottom you'll need a piece of paper just to create the template and then a tool that's called a scribe and it's just a tool with a point at the end and then we just score the pattern into the wood. And this is out of an old doll's house electrical kit but it does the job perfectly. Clamps for holding pieces together or you can use um, clothes pegs and then for holding the larger pieces together I like masking tape that's just a one inch low tack masking tape there. To cut the strip wood you'll need a mitre block and saw. These are available for most good um, craft suppliers or doll's house miniaturist suppliers. For the glazing in the door I've used an acetate and it's just these clear sheets and they're nice and pliable and I think this is um, 0.5mm thick or, or even less than that. I'm not sure of the gauge but just choose something that's nice and fine and that will bend quite easily and that will be easier to cut. And then a couple of grades of sandpaper and I cut them down into these small pieces which makes them easier to handle. And I use a 120 grade which is the stronger one for sanding the edges of the piece and shaping pieces and then a finer one for preparing for paint and tidying up edges etc. So there's a lot needed for this project, slightly more advanced project and it's the first one I've done with a door so if you haven't done doors before I hope this will be really helpful for you. Okay so the cutting list is coming up next and then we'll get started. Okay we're going to begin by attaching the mouldings to the back and side pieces. So begin by making a pencil line down the centre or across the centre of each piece. So that's um, 63.5 millimetres 
or two and a half inches. So just make a small pencil mark at each edge of the wood. 63.5 two and a half inches and then join that up and just place the ruler just below the pencil mark and that will just allow for the thickness of your pencil nib and then continue that line onto each edge of the wood like so and do that on all three pieces and then we want to attach a moulding at the top and the bottom and then one right across the centre there so we'll use this line on the edge to line up with the centre of the moulding. So I've dispensed some glue onto a piece of cereal card and I'm going to use a cocktail stick to apply it. So apply glue to the back of the moulding. And then just lay it along the top of the piece so that the top of each piece is flush. And I've just got a clean cocktail stick here that I'm just going to use to remove the excess glue from along the join there. And you can always sand off any excess glue at the end, but I just find it's easier to do while the glue's still tacky. And I'm going to apply glue again to the bottom moulding. Again, make sure that's flush along that bottom edge. Remove the excess glue. And finally, the central moulding. And then just using the line on the edge of the wood there so that it's in the centre of that piece and then just move along and check at the other end as well and press that into place and then you can always just use your ruler to make sure that you've got the same amount or same distance along each side And then whenever you're attaching um, sort of mouldings to wood like this, they need to be secured. Otherwise, as the glue dries, they'll dry to sort of curl upwards. And I'm using pegs just because I've got more of them than I have of um, mini clamps. But you could use mini clamps as well if you have enough. Just pop one there at each end. And that can then be left to dry. And then just do exactly the same thing with the side pieces. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove your pegs and then just sand each side of each piece. So hold it against your sandpaper and just move it along in one direction. Don't rock it back and forth all your round off the edges and do that on all sides. I've already done these pieces. And then pop the back piece to one side. We're going to attach a leg to each side of each side piece. So apply glue along each edge of the side piece. Like so. And then lay it on your work surface. And just push a leg against each edge and these are the same length as the side so the top and bottom of each piece will be flush and just press it all together and press the side down flat as well and then use your other cocktail stick just to remove any excess glue And then that can be left to dry. 
and do the same with the remaining side piece. Okay, we're now going to draw pencil lines across the back and side pieces for the alignment of our shelves. So I've done these two pieces already, I'll just pop those to one side. So if we take this as the top edge, the pencil lines need to be, and I'll give you the millimetre measurements first, so 33 millimetres, 66 millimetres, 99 millimetres and 112 millimetres all from that top edge and when I'm marking up the side pieces I just do the lines um, within the, the leg so don't draw onto the back leg because then it's hard to um, sort of sand off or erase once we've fitted everything together so just do them in between those legs and then back to the lines and in inches that's one and five sixteenths, two and five eighths, three and seven eighths, and four and thirteen thirty seconds. I've just done a little pencil mark at each side and then I go across and join those up just with a faint pencil line. Take the back piece and apply glue along one long edge. And we're going to glue that to the side so that it's at the front of that back leg. And I'll just put it into position and then I'll show you what I mean from the top angle. show you that from the top you'll see that there's a slight overhang at the back of that back leg and that this piece is sitting towards the front of that leg okay so I'm just going to pop that to one side and then take two of the bigger shelf pieces so this is actually a, a top piece and a shelf piece but you'll have four pieces the same size so take two of those and so that we can attach the door, we're just going to drill a hole in one corner of each piece. And the hole should be two millimetres from this side and 1.5 millimetres from the front edge. So if you just make a little line two millimetres in from the side, like that, and then turn the piece and do a little pencil mark 1.5 millimeters from the long front edge. And do that on both pieces and this will all become clear as we work our way through the tutorial. So 1.5 millimeters from the front, 1 16th of an inch and 2 millimeters in And then using a mini drill like this, just drill through each piece. Once it starts twisting, that means you're through. and we're going to attach the top piece so that the hole we've just made is at the front and at this sort of top edge and that's when you're so when you're looking at the piece from the front our door will be hinged on this side we'll open that way 
so the hole will be along here. So apply glue to the back edge of this shelf piece, or top piece rather. And then attach it so it's flush along that top edge. You can use your finger just to check that it is. And then you may just need to pull the back piece up to meet it, which will square the piece off. And just hold those together for a minute. Pressing it all together while the glue begins to take. And this Gorilla Glue bonds quite quickly, so that should be done now. that and I'll just move that excess glue from inside there just very carefully so the piece doesn't fall apart and now you want to take one of the internal shelf pieces and we're going to place this piece so it sits just below that pencil line okay, so apply glue one long edge and one short edge and then pop that in there so you can just still just see that pencil line so that it's sitting just below it again I'm just going to pull that back piece up to meet it Just remove any excess glue. And then the second of the smaller shelves, the internal shelves. And again, so that's sitting just below that pencil line. And then take your next shelf piece, um, the second one that we drilled the hole in, and again you want the hole at this front top edge in line with this one. And again it's just below that pencil line. the next one and finally the bottom piece and then want to apply glue along all of these exposed side edges and then attach the remaining side piece and you can use these lines again just to make sure that everything's staying in, in line that's where it should be Just have a peep inside. Make all the small adjustments that you need to make. Press everything together. Want to make sure that all these front edges are flush with the front of that leg. And I'm just squeezing it all together. And keep checking that everything's staying in line because as you move it around you may find that it comes out of line a bit. While I'm holding that I'm just going to remove some of that excess glue from inside. And I can 
place that on its side. I've got some strips of masking tape here. I'm just going to place those straight over that side. I haven't cut them quite long enough, but that's okay. It reaches over the top and bottom. I'm pulling it quite tightly. And I'm just going to put a few more pieces from straight over from side to side. all nicely into position while the glue dries. Final piece over that centre. Okay, and then I'm going to leave that to dry. Okay, we're now going to construct the door frame and again in the cutting list I advise to cut this after the unit has been constructed. And the same thing with the drawers that I always say, slight misplacement of these shelves um, can alter the size of the opening. So always sort of construct the main piece and then measure and then cut. So you just want to measure the sort of height of the door opening and then just deduct half a millimetre I think that's one thirty-second of an inch, um, just so the door open and closes nicely. Okay, so when you've done that, cut your piece of wood, and then on this um, door frame side, where it actually opens, we want to round the edge. And I always find it's easier to round the edge first before cutting the actual piece of frame, because you're working with a, a thicker piece of wood, so it's just easier to manage on the sandpaper. And you just want to hold it against the sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and sweep it towards you, bringing it into an upright position as you do so. It's not a very nice sound, is it? And then they'll just start to round off. And then turn the piece over, and you want to do that on the other edge as well. Now I'm not pressing too hard there, and there you can see sort of along that edge, it's a nice rounded edge and that just helps the door open and close smoothly. And then you can cut your frame to width. Now in the cutting list I've said 10 millimetres and that's just because my the handle I'm using is 8 millimetres so I just want a little bit on either side but you can do a, a thinner um, door frame if, if you'd prefer it if you prefer that look. Um, so you'd obviously just cut these two narrower and then your top and bottom frame you'd need to make wider. Okay, so once you've cut your frame pieces, just take one of your um, dressmaking pins and just poke it through that top hole that we made, just a little way. And then take your rounded um, frame side and with the rounded side at this side of the cabinet just pop that into place and it won't go right up against um, the side of the cabinet there'll just be a tiny hairline gap down there and again that's just to help it sort of open and close and then just move your pin so that, that can go in flush with the top and we're just actually making a pin mark so we know where to drill our hole. So push it in a little way so you can feel it just going into that piece of wood. Like that. And then to do the bottom one, because we've got that drawer shelf there, we're going to need to cut um, a pin in half. So use your pliers. Pull that bit off. And then I just have to turn it um, to get it in there. And then you want to put it into that hole that we made in that shelf piece. A little bit fiddly because I haven't got much room to move about. And again, so it's not right up against the side of the cabinet. Just pop that in. I did want that top pin to stay in place, but that's come out. Let's 
pop that back in. And so the frame is flush with the top of that shelf piece there. A bit fiddly, like I say. Like that. And then when you remove those, just actually before you remove them, just check that that sort of opens smoothly. And remove the pins. And that you'll now have a little pinhole in each end that we can use as our drill point. Okay, so I've just turned the camera around because I want to show you this um, mini desk vise that I have attached to my desk all the time. And it just slots onto the desk like that and you tighten up this bottom handle to fix it to the desk. like that and then you can open and close this piece here with this handle and when you're drilling into soft wood um, the vise can tend to sort of dent the wood so I always use just a piece of kitchen towel and just fold it up and then I just put that in the slot before I put my wood in and that then just prevents it from denting the wood. So make sure the wood is upright. Oops, a bit squeaky. Tighten it into the vise. And then to drill the hole, so that's nice and tight in there now, I'm using this mini drill. These are available from most um, miniature suppliers. I can get hold of these too, so if you want one of these, let me know and I'll, I'll order one in for you. I can pop that in my Etsy store. And then put the drill over the little pinprick we've just made. And you want to make sure that when you're drilling, you're completely upright, otherwise the drill bit will sort of puncture through the wood, split through the wood, and then you'll have to start again because then the hinge will also do the same when you come to fit it. So make sure you're upright. And I'm just supporting the piece of wood there as well with my finger. And then just drill down. And I'm going down here about the length of the drill bit. Now this this drill bit actually cracked but I left it because I find that the length of it is exactly the length that I want it to be. And that's probably about a quarter of an inch or just over, it's probably about seven millimetres, just over a quarter of an inch. And then turn the piece around and do the same thing again. Nice and tight in the vise. Completely upright. Drill down. Like that. Now you can um, check that your pins go in nicely. And we'll trim these obviously once we come to fit the door. And that's based that's our basic sort of pin hinge. Okay, now we can fit the frame together. And I'm just going to turn you back around. So back in a sec. Okay, so we're now just going to fit the frame top and bottom between these two side pieces. So just apply glue to each end of the top and bottom pieces. Same with that one, and then just begin by attaching them to the, the straight frame side, making sure that the top of each piece is flush, the same at the bottom there as well, and then just bring in your remaining frame side. 
as long as the top and bottom pieces are flush all along there that will keep the piece square and then just press those together just get rid of that glue making sure everything's staying straight and then that can just be very very carefully moved to one side and left to dry. Then we'll move on to our drawers. Okay, so as with the door, I advise exactly the same thing with the drawers, and that's always to cut the pieces after you've constructed the main unit, and then just measure the openings and resize accordingly. So I have given the measurements um, in the cutting list, but that's for if everything went sort of exact. Um, but do always just check and then just resize accordingly and then when you've cut your pieces you want to apply glue along each outer edge of the base and begin by attaching those side pieces Keeping them upright as you can. And then you just want to let that dry for a minute or so. And when it has done, like this piece here, you then apply glue to each of these front and back edges. and then just attach the front and back pieces keeping these edges along here nice and flush and just very carefully squeeze that all together and again that can be left to one side to dry and then we'll just give it a gentle sand once the glue's dried and just check that it fits nicely into the opening there. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, sand the drawers on all sides, including the top and bottom. And I normally just go um, in small circular motions on both sides, and I won't do it now because it makes an awful sound. And then along the edges, just in the one direction, try not to rock it back and forth or you'll round off the edges. And then just check that in the opening just to make sure that that's a nice smooth fit and that should just slide in and out easily. Okay, so we're now going to shape the unit top and bottom pieces. Um, so first of all, cut a piece of paper that's the same size as the piece and then fold it sort of along the short edge in half like that and then just straighten that off. And then just snip away that top corner, like so. And then take your pencil and from the, the centre, sort of draw a curved line going down, only about three millimetres, an eighth of an inch, and then back up to that corner that you've just snipped. So just a nice simple shape there. And you don't want to make them too sort of elaborate as they'll be more difficult to cut out of the wood. So I've just done a curve coming from the centre out to that corner. And then cut that out. Open that out and then you want to trace that edge onto the top or bottom piece. To one side you'll need it for the other piece and then take your scribe tool and we're just going to score that pencil line into the wood so we're not trying to cut through 
We're just sort of making a groove in the wood to the shape of the pencil line. And if you watch my videos, you'll know I use this technique quite a lot. And it's quite an easy and effective way of creating a, a shaped piece of wood. And I just find by scoring it into the wood first, it helps keep the craft knife on track when we come to cut it out. Just like that, and then take your craft knife, and I've just put a new blade in, which makes this a lot easier. And I always say it, but please do be aware of your fingers when you're doing this, because it's so easy um, for the knife to slip. I've had many cuts that way. And then just go again across the wood. We're not trying to cut out at this stage. We're just making that groove deeper into the wood. And just take your time. little bit at a time. And it's a good idea to practice on a piece of scrap wood, just practice this technique. So it can be quite annoying when you've almost done it and you get to the end and you just cut across your, your pattern, all the wood splits or something. So a little bit at a time until the wood comes free like that. Just using your craft knife like a pencil. Don't be tempted to pull the wood away once you hear it sort of crack. Always wait until you've cut right through. There. And then take your fine grade um, sandpaper. And first of all, just sand along the line, rounding off these sort of sharp corners. And then once you've done that, you can work the sandpaper from front to back, just creating a slight chamfer along that front edge. And then you can turn the piece around and do that on that side as well. So you've sort of got a rounded front edge. And just very gently, but you don't want to take away from the shape you've just made. And then when you're happy, you've got a nice smooth edge. You can just use your template again and create the second piece. Okay, so with this particular project we're going to be doing things slightly differently and we're going to be painting all of the parts before we assemble them. And that's just because when fitting doors, I find that if you fit them first and then paint, you can never really get behind them um, along this sort of hinge edge and you always see bare patches of paint. So I like to paint first. And again, on this piece we're doing the black on gold effect. And the gold paint I'm using is this Rustin's quick dry paint and the only thing with it is the sediment sits at the bottom so you have to shake it really well and then give it a good stir as well before you use it. So I've done that and I've just dispensed some here into a lid and as with all the other pieces we've done in this range I just want to paint the gold all along the edges um, and anywhere where you might sort of get natural wear and tear. And I'm also just going to do a little bit along this inside shelf and that's just to sort of brighten it up a bit in there. I will be obviously displaying some nice bright miniatures in there, but because it's all black I just thought if I do a bit along each shelf, we've just got a little bit of brightness in there when we put the door on. And then on the top and bottom pieces I've attached a tab of masking tape to the back there, just a, a long piece of tape that I've stuck on with a flap and then just secured it at each end and that's just so you can paint it without getting paint on your fingers um, and that, that obviously attaches to the top like that so you don't need to paint the underside but there will be a slight overhang when we've attached it so make sure you just go around with your paint around that sort of outside edge of the underside but those, those tabs really help and then you've got something to sort of 
prop it on while the paint's drying as well. Okay, so do apply your gold along the edges of all pieces and then we'll apply the black paint. Okay, so that's my gold outlining done and I'm now going to do a coat of black and I'm just using an emulsion paint and these little sample pots are really good. Okay, so the paint is now dried and I did two coats on all of the pieces. I don't tend to paint inside the drawer openings because um, then that does affect the size of the opening. The drawer won't go in as easily. I have done all of the drawers and a, a little bit of sanding was required, which I did on the bottom um, just to get that to fit back in there. And you, and you will find that when you apply paint because it will add sort of an extra thickness to the drawer. So then take a piece of your fine grade um, sandpaper and you just want to go along any of the edges just really gently and just picking out that gold um, paint and you'll find as you're doing this that because it's black paint it gets really dusty but what we'll do later is we'll brush that off using a soft brush and then we'll go over with a coat of clear varnish and that will just bring out these gold, really pick out the gold and add a nice sheen to the black. So I'm just going around the edges of the drawers and then on the unit I'll just pick out sort of along the um, corner posts, along the shelves inside just to add a bit of brightness in there. But however you want to do it, and you can do as much as you want or as little as you want, uh, but just do a little bit at a time uh, don't go too mad all at once and then just sort of have a look at it and see how it's looking and that's all I really want on the drawers and then the same again on the top I'm just going to pick out a little bit along the the edge a bit along the sides so just go through and do all of the pieces and then we'll come back and attach the door okay so before we actually fit the door to the unit we're going to attach the acetate so you want to cut a piece that is just slightly bigger than the opening and this obviously fits on the inside of the door and I've left a border of about six millimeters or a quarter of an inch all the way round around the opening there I hope you can see that there and the glue I'm using for this is by Deluxe Materials and it's called glue and glaze and I use it because it doesn't fog um, the acetate um, but if you sort of don't use a lot of acetate you might not want to go to the expense of buying this whole tube so you can still use your sort of PVA um, glue but it just means that you have to be sort of carefully wipe it off um, with a cocktail stick otherwise it will just sort of fog the acetate and this does come with a handy little nozzle but my the top of mine is broke <laughs> so I've dispensed some onto a piece of card and we're just going to apply it around the inside of the frame with a cocktail stick. And I'm not going right up alongside the frame, I want to leave a bit of a border there so that it doesn't spread into the opening. And then I just want to lay the adhesive on top, the acetate, sorry, on top and I'm just wiping off the dust with my fingers. Now, when you're in your workshop, it is going to get dusty, but fit it and then we'll wipe it off with a piece of damp kitchen towel and that gets rid of all the sort of dust. So I just want to lay that on there. And this doesn't need to be secured even, so just press it down gently. And then turn it over and I just a little bit just went into that corner so I'm just going to remove that with a cocktail stick and if you're using a PVA you'll want to do this as well all the way around so I'm now going to leave that to dry and then we'll attach it to the unit okay so when you come to fit the door the first thing you need to do is just check that it fits nicely into the opening and if you find that it's sort of sticking in any of the areas, just gently, very gently sand, try again, and then sand again if you need to. But just do a little bit at a time so you don't take too much off. 
and then take a dressmaking pin and when you've painted you may have sort of just bunged up the, the hole so just go through with the pin just to clear out any paint like that and do the same with the holes that you drilled in the door as well just make sure they're clear and then pop a pin in the top hole and then with your pliers you just want to trim that now I know if I sort of rest my pliers on the top of the door and cut then I'll have a three millimeter or one eighth of an inch um, pin hanging out there and that's probably the same with all pliers you've got a bit of a ridge on this side which will leave about three mil but if if you've got a different pair of pliers then just leave that one eighth of an inch or three millimeters pull that off and then we now need to cut a pin so that it's narrower than the height of this bottom drawer opening I've already measured mine, it's about 11 millimetres, so I'm going to cut that there. And I'm actually going to begin by putting that bottom pin through the hole. It is quite fiddly because you haven't got a lot of room to work with at the bottom here. And then remove the top pin again, put that to one side, and then push the bottom pin into the hole in the bottom of the door, and then close the door as it will sit. And then you can push that bottom pin up just with the tip of your pliers there. Make sure that goes in so that it's flush with the bottom of the shelf, otherwise your drawer won't go in. And then you want to take the top pin and push that one in. I'm just going to open my door before I do that. Line up the holes. And you can't see, obviously, now, so you're just feeling for that hole in the top. And then, before you push the pin all the way in, just make sure you've got a nice, smooth open and close action there. Then you can push the pin all the way down. And I'm purposely not shutting that all the way because we're going to now attach the top and bottom and I want to have that open so that I can put clamps along that top piece. Okay, so apply glue firstly to the top of the unit. so and then lay your top piece down on the worktop and you want the back of the unit to be flush with the back of the piece so you've got a flat edge along there and an even overhang at either side and you can just do that by eye press that down and use your spare cocktail stick to remove the excess glue. From along that back as well. And then turn it the right way up. And then I just like to use masking tape and clamp, so I'll just put a couple of pieces of masking tape over the top and if you remove any of the paint when you take the masking tape off you can just touch that up we'll be attaching the feet and we need to paint those so we'll have to get the black paint out again anyway and then open up the door I'm just going to pop a couple of clamps in there as well 
And as you know by now, as paint as glue is drying, the wood tends to lift away. So it's important to clamp these together as well. Just put a couple in there and, and check at the back. And if you find that it's lifting at the back there, you can just put another little bit of tape in and pull that down quite tightly onto the back piece. Okay, so then turn it round and do exactly the same thing along the bottom. I think I'll pop one in the middle there as well. Okay, and then that piece can be left to dry. Okay, so we're now going to attach the feet and I just want to take away from that squareness by just slightly tapering each one at the bottom. So to do that, just hold it, put the sandpaper on your worktop, hold the foot against it and just very slightly lift up that back end and then just pull it towards you. it a few times and that will then start to taper off and then do that on each side like so and then I'm going to attach them to the bottom of the unit so that they each sit just below these corner posts so it just looks like a continuation of the corner post there so just dot on a blob of glue and then put that into position so that it's sort of square from the front angle and from the side just pop that back a bit like that and then attach the remaining three once the glue has dried you can do your gold paint and then the black. Remembering to touch in any areas that were removed by the masking tape. So once the paint has dried, just sand away some of the paint to reveal the gold beneath. And then you're ready to apply the final coat of varnish. And I'm using this um, satin clear. And when you're um, using clear varnish on a dark surface always just dispense a bit into a plastic pot and I just use this old spoon to do that and I've just done a couple of um, spoonfuls in there don't put too much in because you won't be able to tip it back in because the black paint will sort of contaminate it and then you'll contaminate the whole pot so always just dispense a little and then be careful when you're going around the perspex you don't need to do the inside um, of that door frame and I also just do the front of the drawers no need to do the back and sides as that again will affect the the fit okay so once the varnish has completely dried the final thing to do is attach the handles and I've used these antique brass drop handles and these are available in my Etsy store and you can attach these just using the wood glue or PVA attach them centrally to the drawers and the door and pop that in there and then just use like I say a piece of damp um, kitchen towel to wipe the acetate which will remove any dust that's got on there as you're working. And there is our completed display unit. I hope you've enjoyed this project. If so, please do subscribe to the channel as there's lots more to come. And do check out those Doll's House Diary videos and you'll see the living room coming together. And I'm going to go off now and pop this into place. So I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.